Welcome back. And now for stories across Africa, President Nana Addo Dankwa Akufuado has stressed the need for the country to take charge of its petroleum sector, with more Ghanaians directly involved in the process of developing the oil and gas resources. Although Ghana is making steady progress in the local content in the petroleum sector, the development of Ghana's oil and gas resources is largely in the hands of foreign players. President Akufuado believes that the country will benefit significantly from the sector if Ghanaians get involved and participate in developing the resources. President Takufuado made these remarks when beneficiaries of the Accelerated Oil and Gas Capacity Building Program called on him at the Jubilee House in Accra yesterday. The Accelerated Oil and Gas Cap Capacity Building Program is an initiative of the government to ensure that Ghanaians are trained in the petroleum sector as part of measures to improve local content in the sector. And joining us live is Elizabeth Bini Amisa. By me, I'm Misa, I beg your pardon, a power sector expert. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. The recent call by President Nana Akufuado for more indigenous involvement in the oil and gas sector is, is kind of suggests that it is currently dominated by foreign players. Is this is this true? I think this is true in much of Africa. Um, I think, you know, we in Ghana, we have the likes of Anadarku, uh, Cosmos, Tullo, ENI, Vital, Acker Energy from Norway. And now we have a new entrant of an indigenous player called Springfield, but this is really kind of the first large scale participation. We had some minority interest in some of the other oil and gas fields, such as Jubilee, um, some minority interest by some Ghanaians who um, were very early on in helping to originate these deals, but we haven't seen large-scale domestic uh, participation to date. And why do you think, you know, why, why do we tend to see a dominance of the foreign players when it comes to oil and gas in Africa? Nigeria, of course, is another case, uh, you know, in point too. Sure. I mean, it's, it's history, it's tradition, it's technical experience, it is access to capital, as well as to access to the global value chain. I think we have a very big part to play in this. I think that on the face of it, you know, local participation is needed. We need it very badly. We need it not only because we own the resource, we need the, the revenues and the um, value of that resource to really flow through our economy, to create jobs, to grow our GDP, and really for the, the government to, the country really to benefit from that natural resource. And so I agree with it in, on, on the face of it. I think that we need to put certain measures in place to make sure that it's done organically and sustainably, as well as with uh, local capital market participation um, and local financing. All right. Uh, the president of Ghana has already spoken about encouraging more involvement. Uh, what measures would you say need to be put in place to stimulate this, um, aside the verbal commitment? Sure. I think... Um, Ghana has shown a commitment. We've been drilling oil now for about 11 years. All of our major universities, University of Ghana, KNUST, our technical university in Kumasi, our University of Mines and Technology, each one of these universities have petroleum engineering, geophysics, geosciences around the petroleum space. We have a number of graduates that have also taken advantage of uh, programs in Scotland, such as the University of Dundee. And then we have a wealth of West Africans who have been working in the oil and gas space globally for several decades. And so we really need to capitalize on um, finding those people who want to return home that have the, the global expertise who can do it. We've seen it in your country. You know, you guys have had very, very strong country managers for Shell, for Exxon, for the better part of the last several decades. And I think we can emulate that in Ghana. Is there also a possibility of, you know, uh, support, you know, for people who want to buy into the industry, indigenous people who like to buy into the industry? Sure. So this is something that's very, um, this is probably the stickiest point, right? Because even now, if you look at Ghanaian ownership in some of our gas fields, so take, for example, our very first oil and gas field, Jubilee, even Ghana National Petroleum Company, they own 13.75% of equity in that and 10% of that is carry. And carry essentially means you did not put in capital. And so when it comes down to dividends and to benefiting, you're not, you're not a preferred shareholder. So you're not getting the same bang for the buck that you would have if you put actual capital in. And so this is a place where we can look at, you know, taking some of our revenues from oil and gas, some of our other revenues from the energy sector and create funds that yeah. would be available for 
Indigenous participation, as well as including our local banks and partnering with some international banks to support local ownership in a real way. Okay, and quickly, how do you think this uh, might also change the dynamics of things, especially in the post-COVID global economy? Yes, post-COVID COVID, the global economy, if it has shown us anything, is that we all became very regionalized very fast. And so in the ways that Africa and the developing world really depended on the developed world and the West to really bail us out, they have crises of their own. And so this idea that, you know, foreigners from outside keep flying in and flying out to do business, just as they're repatriating their profits back to their home countries, there's going to be a need to recruit locally, um, as well as people who are on the outside in the diaspora from these this region to be able to uh, not only fill in the gaps, but actually take their rightful place in working in this sector um, with their expertise and their passion for being of this place. I think it takes partnership from both inside and outside. And I think for too long, Africans, we've allowed people from outside to manage and dictate how we do business. And so we as Africans need to put our money and our expertise where our mouth is to be able to make sure that we are really participating in a real way. Elizabeth Baini and Misa, thank you so much for speaking with us. Looking forward to a first having this conversation me, guys. again. <laughs> Thanks for having me.